I'm here today to tell you my life story so far. I like to think of it as a phoenix rising from the ashes. In order for me to get you to where I am today, I'm going to take you down memory lane. Some of you have been parents. Some of you have been in the service. A hundred percent of you have been children. So as I walk through my life situations, I want you to imagine yourself through them and know that we have the strength and power to overcome. I was born in 1981 to a codependent mom and an abusive stepdad. I witnessed the beatings my mom got. He had his own personal rag doll. And I witnessed this for years. At around age five, my mom gave birth to the first of three siblings. He was so cute. Although I was rarely allowed to interact with him, I was thrilled to be a big sister. And a few things I didn't understand was why my stepdad disliked me so much. It wasn't my fault I wasn't his daughter. Soon after, it wasn't my fault that my brother wasn't his either. You see, my mom reconnected with my biological father, which resulted in my little brother. So the abuse from my stepdad progressively got worse. So at the same time, I became my mother's rag doll, completely, completely not understanding why this was happening. At about age 12, I told my mom, I said, you know, you have to make a choice. My stepdad or me? Well, that was when I started my journey in foster care. I moved along, I moved in a lot of different homes. Some I would stay months, some hours. Somewhat like a layover. Although I traveled really light, all my belongings would fit in a trash bag. At times, I would beg to stay in some homes, and some I wouldn't dare to close my eyes. So due to the wanting of normalcy and love from my family, my mom would sometimes have a change of heart. So I would go back home with the desire of having just a normal, loving home. Soon after, simply days after, things would go back to normal. So during the, the back and forth, you, I aged out of the system a lot sooner than I should have. So I would work a few jobs, money was scarce, but I was able to rent space or beds from friends. So as that came to an end, I stayed connected to a family member, and I met this boy, sweet boy at that that Sue became my abusive boyfriend. So now I had become somebody else's rag doll. So I was not only with him for one, not two, but five years. I even moved in with him. And at first it started like verbal abuse, calling me names, making fun of me, simply throwing my situation in my face. And then it got physical. He would throw me into lockers at school, spit in my face, and at times put a knife through my throat. And I thought to myself, gosh, is this what it's going to be? Then one day, I found myself at a hospital. He was laying in the bed, and he was getting his stomach pumped with charcoal because he had decided to take his own life because I decided to leave. Now, although he did make it out alive, I knew this was the end for me. So thinking through not having enough money, no support, I wasn't sure what I would do. But I knew I wanted something different. So they say things happen for a reason. This is where, through a mutual friend, I met my now late friend, John. 
You see, he was so excited about earning some extra money, and he knew a little bit about my situation. So he recruited me to join the army. I figured I would be getting away for a few months and earning some ex extra money. Seems ideal. So I went ahead and gave it, a, gave, gave it my all. So in the midst of getting ready, I meet this tall, dark, handsome fella. His name was Victor. <laughs> he was very caring and attentive. But how long was that gonna last? So I paid not much mind to it. So I continued on my training. Though Victor and I say connected during boot camp, I was so focused on my commitment to John that that was my chance to go somewhere where no one knew me and no one could judge me. So as I graduated boot camp, John and I both received our bonuses. And I decided, you know what? I want us to go back home and just see what's, go what's going on. So as I go back home, excited to see my siblings that now we have two more siblings, I was received with hugs and kisses. They were not at all warm. I immediately felt the pain and the suffering my siblings had gone through. You see, while I was gone, they endured physical, mental, verbal, and sexual abuse. I felt devastated. I felt like I was their big sister. I should have been there to help them. Although I tried, knowing the cycle of how things happen, I wasn't able to. So I simply decided to just move on. So shortly after, I received my orders to go overseas. It was in the midst of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. And remember that handsome guy I talked about? Well, he figured he'd share that he really couldn't live without me and he loved me a ton. So we decided to get married. So on November 26th, we got married. And just a few weeks after, on December 14th, I was gone for 22 months, give or take a few weeks. That's me in a, in the, on our plane to Iraq. And throughout the tour, I felt sad, lonely, and angry that this is what it took in order for me to really get away. And at times, I would wait, I would really want my eyes not to open. I just wanted things to just be over. And some days, I was really grateful they did. So they say military training is a little tough, but when you get down to it, real life is simply surreal. On one of our missions to a school, a local school, we got attacked by an RPG, which is a rocket propelled grenade. The cloud alone is so overwhelming. The noise, everything that goes through your head on how training was, was taught to you is, it's like a movie. So after this incident, as we're getting back to the, the base, we're unloading, and that is where I notice I am more than lucky. As I reached through my bag that I had, there was pieces of, pieces of shrapnel that were stuck on the webbing of this bag that never went through when we got hit with an RPG. Those pieces in that bag, I keep as a reminder of how lucky I really was. So as I returned, I returned home for about nine days during my tour. I tell you what, it is so hard to get accustomed when you've been gone for so long. Everybody wants to know what you're doing, what you've, been, what you've seen. I mean, it's totally overwhelming. And I thought, if this is what it is in nine days, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I really come home. So as my tour came to an end, a couple great things happened. I was promoted to sergeant. I was awarded the Combat Action Badge, along with a Bronze Star. So as I got home, 
I needed to realize that when I drove on the highway up back home, there was people, sorry, there weren't people throwing grenades over the overpasses. So driving was a little uncomfortable. And that the person with the phone, with the cell phone on, was not gonna ignite an IED. So finally home, and one of the things that were really difficult to get accustomed to was society. I was a female veteran, a wife. And just dealing with normal things was just, seemed almost impossible. So being married, Victor decided to mention children. The way I grew up in my circumstances, children were not in my, in my planning. So that debate ended quite fast. So I decided, you know what? I went through my mom, my stepdad, abusive boyfriend, grenades. School seems like the thing to do. So I decided to enroll in school. My first thought was to become a mortician because nobody would talk to me. Or well, I wouldn't talk to them. So that was quite, quite an easy choice. But I instead went for radiation therapy, which I love. So as I graduated, having a little tough time back in high school, I graduated as a, a salutatorian of my class, which was pretty cool. And then I started working in my clinics Victor, once again, brought up having a family. And after a few debates, he won. And our babies were born in 2010, 11, and 13. I tell you what, the minute I looked and held my babies the first time, it was instant warmth, joy, and love. Immediately followed by a sense of hatred and hurt to think, how could my mom treat me the way she did and allow someone to do the same? So now, at this point, at that point in my life, I'm a reservist in the army, I'm a wife, a radiation therapist, and a mom of three under three. I'm thinking, there has to be something I can do to be home because I truly enjoyed spending time with my family and, of course, my children. So I was introduced to a cosmetics company. Now, I did not wear anything. I, well, I wore chapstick on my cheeks and mascara on my eyebrows. So I was pretty, not the candidate that you would, you would choose. <laughs> but I did love the flexibility of being my own boss and, and spending time with my family. And earning cars was a plus. What I, what, I look, what I love most is, ironically, the girl that wanted to be a mortician now does makeovers on hundreds of live, breathing women. <laughs> and, ironically, the girl that was not allowed to interact with her siblings is a speaker for an organization called Hear My Story. And I'm able to share my story with children that are going through the same or similar situations that I've gone through. So I am Ingrid Y. Hernandez. I am a loving mother, a business owner, a supported wife. I'm always excited. I am my present, not my past. And as of this very day, I'm a TEDx speaker. Thank you.